The Matthew Books. Matthew, Tell Me About Heaven. A first-hand description of the afterlife by Suzanne Ward. Published by Matthew Books. Part 2. Nirvana. Recreation. Suzanne. Do you have any recreational activities like ours other than travel? Well, much more like ours than your travel. Matthew, in many cases we do, but with some differences as you might imagine. Sporting events are very popular here, just as they are there. But we consider sports to be as much learning experiences as recreation, and our attitude about team sports differs from yours. Those of us who share the same game interests are a group of friends rather than an organization such as your teams are. No people are excluded because they're not as proficient as others, and naturally no players get exorbitant salaries, and there's no spirit of kill them in our competitions. We have a multitude of other sports too, for individuals or a few people sharing the activity. There's swimming, which is still my favorite of all, and tennis, golf, cycling, all of your winter sports. Actually, we have all the sports you do except those that damage or destroy any kind of life. That includes boxing, which can injure the brain, and of course, we don't have hunting, fishing, or any kind of animal fights. But those types of activities aren't missed by the people who have been attracted to them as participants or spectators on Earth. Once they see the sanctity of all life here, they easily switch their interests to non-destructive recreation. Oh, and we don't engage in stupid things like mud wrestling or chicken driving either. Entertainment is a huge part of our recreation here, just as there. Our concerts are magnificent. Some sound like 10,000 stringed instruments and flutes and reeds in angelic purity. We have other types of concerts too, with music so beautiful that all who attend are enthralled. But if we choose not to be at the concert site, we can be wherever we wish and tune into the radio wave that corresponds to the emanating source and we don't miss a note. Dramatic productions are immensely popular and their caliber exceeds even your most spectacular shows. In our theaters, just as in our concert halls, we have those exceptionally talented people who once performed so brilliantly for you. We have great writers whose works still thrill audiences there, and Broadway and Hollywood actors and actresses so admired on Earth. Without the limitations of their former third density world, their performances are finer than any ever seen there. We have the people behind the scenes too, whose masterful technical or artistic talents are essential parts of any splendid show. The theaters themselves are dramatic showcases, and our special effects surpass your imagination. You could say, literally, the sky's the limit. There's a more intimate entertainment form that we call simply Story Hour. Our storytellers are so expert that they enchant adults as well as children, and these are popular events. So are large or small social gatherings of people sharing mutual interests, just as you enjoy, but no alcohol or social drugs are ever served at our fiestas. All of those are important parts of life here. But our recreation can be as simple as a short, pleasant conversation or seeing an enchanting view. Charming moments such as those are not regarded on Earth with the recognition and appreciation they deserve for uplifting the spirit, which is what recreation is all about. Also, learning is such a pleasure for us that public lectures and guest speakers in a class 
are a type of recreation and, on Earth, very few folks consider classrooms to be recreational places. Suzanne, I can stop wondering if you have enough to do there. Do you have television? Matthew, not generally, but those newly arrived folks who so greatly enjoyed watching television during Earth lifetimes can manifest their own sets if they want to. The programming might be limited though as they must also manifest that. Our exchange of talent into entertainment is live and it's such superb quality and variety that, once adjusted to life here, hardly anyone prefers mechanical entertainment. All who want to attend the concerts or theatrical productions may do so. No high ticket prices prevent attendance and there are no bad seats. Seating space isn't a consideration either because we don't have to contend with dense physical bodies. Transportation isn't a problem either. Arrival can be instantaneous because only the desirous thought of going is necessary and there are no shut-ins due to physical constraints. If people there had the same easy means of attending live performances we have, I think far fewer folks would spend so much time in front of TV sets, don't you? Suzanne, I'd certainly think so. Do you celebrate any of our holidays? Matthew, we reverently acknowledge the most sacred days of all the religions represented here. But those various times may be more actively celebrated by the individuals whose journey was in accordance with their chosen religion during their immediate past lifetime. Mother, because of their relevance in this context, I want to mention again two things I've told you. First, we are cumulative souls, not only the soul of the last lifetime and most of us have experienced many lifetimes in the various godly religions of Earth. So have most of you. I specify godly because Satanism, however ungodly, is classified as a religion there, and no Satanist would ever be here. Second, the soul energy of the most holy figures of Earth's major religions came from the Christed realm, that highest angelic realm closest to Creator. With that same origin, none can be considered more enlightened or holy than the other. National holidays on Earth are not celebrated as such here, but we are well aware of the pomp and ceremony there. We observe the parades and speeches with both humor and sadness because of the political deception behind it all. No, Mother, I don't want to get into a discussion of your politics now, so please dismiss your question.